Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy. I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions on health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have read about, heard about, if you have a health challenge or a loved one has a health challenge you need help dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, or even better, if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, Call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business or yourself. You can live the entrepreneur lifestyle. If you're an entrepreneur or you like the lifestyle, if you want to work out of your home, if you want to earn thank you checks for helping change the world at a very fundamental place, the, the place of good health, nothing's more fundamental than good health and nothing is more important to, for your good health than getting on a good nutritional supplement program. And you can be in business helping people understand nutrition, providing nutrition, nutrition, helping change their lives at the fundamental level of health. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. You can get all your longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. And you can hit the Join the Team link if you like and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Okay. We are talking cortisol. Last we spoke, we were talking about the diseases that are reflective of cortisol deficiencies and cortisol excess. Both cortisol deficiencies and cortisol excess are problematic. Cortisol, cortisol excess or excessive exposure to cortisol is, uh, is kind of like the, you can think of the jittery feeling that you get from coffee. That kind of wired feeling that you get from drinking too much caffeine or eating, uh, doing too much Mountain Dew or coffee or wherever you get your, your caffeine from. Caffeine is the world's favorite, most favorite drug, probably by far, because most of us are dealing with cortisol issues. We become resistant to cortisol. Cortisol doesn't work as well. Cortisol is a very important substance. It's not the bad guy. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. It's not the bad guy. It's a good guy. It's the chronic exposure that's the problem. If, you, if you're dealing with things like insomnia, where you're, you want to fall asleep but you can't, you're tired and wired at the same time, jitteriness, anxiety, melasma, dark spots, that is melasma means dark spots on your skin, Uh, chronic uh, loose stools can be a sign of excessive cortisol issues. I'm sorry, chronic constipation, not chronic loose stools. Chronic uh, diarrhea can be a sign of cortisol deficiency, actually. Deficiency symptoms include uh, lethargy, just feeling blah, muscle weakness, low blood pressure. So both deficiencies and excesses in cortisol are a problem. The disease caused by or uh, that gets the name of uh, cortisol deficiency disease is called, I should say, Addison's disease. Cushing's disease uh, goes the other way around. That's too much cortisol. High blood pressure. If you uh, readily readily bruise, oily skin, 
reproductive issues, menstrual cramps. Those are signs of cortisol excess, and they're also signs of, of Cushing's syndrome, they call it. Not Cushing's disease. Cushing's syndrome meaning it's just a bunch of different symptoms. And so they call it Cushing's. They put it under the umbrella name of Cushing's. It's just excessive exposure to cortisol. Whether you get diagnosed with Cushing's or not, you got too much cortisol going on. In my opinion, many of the health challenges that we medicalize, that we give names to, that we give, give diagnosis to, by the way, the, the, the science of diagnosis is called nosology, N-O-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Did you know there's this, actually a science of diagnosis? It, 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 the idea that we can name diseases and then treat them is really only a science that's about 400 years old or so. We started classifying diseases and naming diseases in the, 1600, in the late 1600s, early 1700s. Before then, you were just sick. Then they started to name the diseases. They thought that was an it would, probably was an advance. It definitely was an advance over uh, Middle Ages medicine. But today, it hampers us. It hinders us. It prevents us. It, it, number one, it prevents us from really dealing with the symptomology because now we deal with a name. We deal with a category. But number two, it lends itself to commoditization. It lends itself to business. It lends itself to commerce. It lends itself to finances. It lends itself to economics. It, it lends itself to the customer business model or paradigm, which is not where health belongs. We have medicalized health because it makes a lot of people a lot of money. But the, the tragedy is, is there's human beings at the other end of the equation. There's mothers and fathers and children and grandmothers and grandfathers at the other end of this commerce equation. And that's where I deal. And that's why I get so passionate about this thing. That's why I, sometimes I sound, I sound angry. It really ticks me off that there are people who know nothing about health and they're in the health business or, or don't care about health or don't care about therapy. And I'm thinking drug company executives. And I don't, I'm certainly generalizing here, but from the looks of it, it's cer certainly more than less. The medical model has been commoditized and we suffer. Do you know this is the second year in a row where life expectancy has dropped in the United States of America? This has never happened before, people. Even in the, the midst of the Great Depression, it did not happen. And it is the direct result, it is the direct result of medicalization and commoditization. It's not a side effect of medicalization. It's not a side effect of giving the medical model, all, uh, giving our lives over to the medical model. That's basically what we do. We give our lives over to the medical model. And uh, the fact that our life expectancy has now dropped for the second year in a row is not a side effect of this. It's a direct effect of it. It's like the... Uh, the paradigm, it, you take the drug model where the direct effect of the medicine is death and just apply it to, the biz, to, to what we're talking about here where the, the business model, the direct effect of the business model is death. The direct effect of the medical model is death. The direct effect of nosology, diagnosis, classifications, functional medicine, testing, drugs, surgery, all the tools of the trade of the medical model, the net, net result is the second year in a row, our life expectancy has dropped. We're the fattest culture, we're the sickest culture, we're the, the most obese culture, we're the highest blood, have the highest blood pressure issues, or, or the, have the most blood pressure issues, cancer, of any culture ever. <laughs> it's, it's hidden in plain sight, the failure of the medical model. So they'll name these, these things, these diseases. You'll have lots of these different diseases. But you know what? In my opinion, there's not, there's not a lot of diseases. And, and of course, I'm making a distinction now here between uh, chronic long-term challenges, progressive challenges, degenerative challenges, which make up the bulk of our medication, of our medical problems, and then uh, acute issues. Acute issues is where the medical model really does shine. And by acute, I mean like mechanical issues. But when it comes to chronic long-term degenerative disease, there's only one disease. It's called MBFA disease. My body is falling apart disease. I'm naming it. That's the only disease we need to know. MBFA. My body is falling apart. That's all. And, and I'm not being glib here or silly or funny. I'm, I'm being serious because once we understand there's only one disease, my body is falling apart disease, all we got to do is figure out how to build the body back up, period. How do you build the, bo the body back up? In with the good, out with the bad. It's as simple as that, people. In with the good, out with the bad. Do not overcomplicate it. Your TSH doesn't matter from this perspective. Your BMD and your CRK and your liver enzymes, they don't matter from this perspective. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back. Okay. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. We're talking cortisol, the third point on our triangle of disease. Cortisol uh, leads to hypothyroid. The adrenal thyroid complex is, is the third point on the triangle of disease. Cortisol leads to uh, hypothyroidism. Hypercortisol leads to hypothyroid. Hypothyroid is really the jumping off point, but I call it the adrenal thyroid complex. If you have a health challenge, you by definition have an adrenal challenge, period. If you have a health challenge, you by definition have a thyroid problem, period. If you have a health challenge, you by definition have a blood sugar problem, period. And if you have a long-term progressive degenerative health challenge, arthritis, autoimmunity, cancer, heart disease, whatever, Parkinson's, dementias, you by definition have a digestive problem as well. They go together. They're, they are the definition of long-term health challenges, what I call the triangle of, of disease. And this simplifies everything. You don't need to know your diagnosis. You just need to know you feel crappy. You, your diagnosis doesn't matter. It's how you feel via your symptomology. Who cares if you've been pronounced with a magical cure if you feel crappy? And who cares if your doctor says you have a horrible disease but you feel awesome? It's the feeling crappy or feeling awesome that matters. And they divert our attention because they can't make us feel crappy or feel awesome from a chronic, long-term, degenerative standpoint. If you want to know if you have a cortisol problem, go by how you feel. Now, you can have your cortisol checked. They have home saliva tests. If you're really curious about it, you basically just spit into a test tube before you go to bed. And this is when your cortisol levels, as we said, are, are supposedly supposed to be at their lowest is before you go to bed or right when you go to bed. And uh, you, you, so right before bedtime or right when you go to bed, you, you get a little saliva, put it, put it in a test tube, send it off to the lab, and you'll get your results. Results are supposedly 90% accurate. You don't need a test. If you can't sleep, but you're jitter, uh, if you're tired, but you're jittery, you can't sleep, but you want to sleep, and you're anxious, or you wake up in the middle of the night, and you can't go back to sleep, chances are your cortisol's off. And if you have a long-term progressive degenerative health challenge, definitely your cortisol is off. And if you feel really wired, if you want to know what it feels like, just go by how uh, you feel after you drink a cup, of, uh, a cup of, or a couple cups of espresso, and then go by how you feel when you crash off the espresso. That, in a, in a nutshell, is too much cortisol and too little cortisol. The up you get from the caffeine and the down you get when you crash. So when we think of cortisol, we think of stress, but it's, 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 cortisol is much more than a, an adrenal stress hormone. It's also made in other organs. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's made in the liver. It's made in body fat. That means obesity can upregulate cortisol. That means the more weight you're carrying, the more body fat you're carrying, the more cortisol you're going to uh, produce. Likewise, if you're dealing with fatty liver disease, more likely you're going to be hypercortisol because cortisol is produced in both of these structures, in particular in fat. And interestingly, not only does more body fat make you make more cortisol, but cortisol makes you store more body fat. So it's like another one of those biological health cycles where one thing leads to another, which leads to more of the first thing, which leads to the more of the second thing. Cortisol is also a skin hormone. And cortisol is, also, is responsible for a lot of the misery that we um, have to endure when it comes to things like rashes, skin sensitivities. Skin should never be sensitive, by the way. That's one of the great myths in the world of skin care, that you have these different skin types and one is a sensitive skin type. No. Skin is not supposed to be sensitive. In fact, not only do you not want to do anything about your sensitive skin, you want to listen to your sensitive skin. Your sensitive skin is your best friend. You don't want to put anything, you don't want to deal with your sensitive skin topically. You want to deal with your sensitive skin at the level of the immune system, which is the gut. Dige uh, sensitive skin is a classic sign of elevated cortisol, skin cortisol, following gut problems, digestive problems. Nobody's skin should ever be sensitive, period. Skin is designed by, through 
billions of years of evolution to be strong and resilient and resistant to the environment. It should not be sensitive. Oiliness is another classic sign of cortisol problems, skin cortisol problems, or cortisol problems in general. I'm not going to isolate it because when the body secretes cortisol, it secretes it everywhere. That's how the body works. When your immune system is active, it's active everywhere. When something happens to the body in one part, it happens in every part because the body is a system, and that's the definition of a system. We call it the immune system. When you touch the left part of a unit that's called a system, the right part reacts. It's all a system. It's connected, and that's why you can't take an organ out and not expect to have problems because it's a system. You cannot have your gallbladder taken out and not have problems because it's a system. The system is a different system without the gallbladder. Cortisol, by the way, is made from the body's most important, most multifunctional, most life-managing, most important life-managing substance, cholesterol. I know I say a lot. I say it a lot. I'll say it again. Cholesterol is arguably the most important molecule in the body, certainly the most multifunctional. And to lower cortisol, and, and in terms of stress management and life management, Handling the day-to-day -day ups and downs of life, building in response to breakdown, breakdown and or, uh, slowing down building if it's building too fast, increasing breakdown if building is happening too fast, the balance, homeostasis, the ups getting pulled down and the downs getting pulled up. Homeostasis means the balancing act that we all do every day in life. It is regulated by cholesterol, period. And the boneheaded idea that we need to take a drug to poison our cholesterol is so unspeakably stupid from a biochemical standpoint that I cannot help talking about it every, uh, practically every day, if not on this program and presentations and when I'm talking to people on the phone and wherever. It is so boneheadedly stupid to think that you can lower your cholesterol levels with a drug and be healthier for it. Bonehead, bonehead, bonehead who uh, medical professional who works this way it is completely ignorant from a biochemical standpoint cholesterol not only makes hormones it is hor you could i say it is a hormone because all you got to do is tweak it a little bit and it becomes cortisol or all you do is tweak it a little bit and it becomes vitamin d the, the chemical structure the basis the chassis of the chemical structure of all the steroid hormones the life management hormones the growth fertility youth hormones are cholesterol including cortisol and here's the thing, when you're under stress, you're going to be needing more cortisol. Your body is so brilliant. Your doctor might not be, but your body is. Your body is so genius that when you need more cortisol because you're dealing with too much stress, it'll make more cholesterol, and your cholesterol will go up. And you'll, because of the stress hormones and all the stress in your life, you'll have a heart attack. Your doctor will say, well, we got to lower that cholesterol. Can you see the silliness of this? The cholesterol is helping you make the cortisol, which is helping you deal with life. And if you have a heart attack, it's not the cholesterol's fault. This is crazy. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're coming back with more good health information and your questions right after this. Sign. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. And we do have lines open for you. 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. If you want to check out our truth treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Loaded with fat-soluble vitamin C as well as retinol, vitamin A in its most powerful over-the-counter form, 5% retinol, never any preservative, preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, silicon oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. In any of our Truth Treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, we'll get to your calls here in just a, just a sec, so hang tight. Got a story here today about something... 
a, a beverage that a lot of folks are talking about these days. I started making this beverage back in the 90s. I'm not a big fan of kombucha, but it is out there now. It used to be kind of a hippy dippy Boulder, Colorado thing. You would get a little mushroom, a little, uh, a little fungus, put it in your fridge. I did this back in the 90s. You would take a, a, just a piece of fungus, put it in some uh, water, let it sit in the fridge, and eventually let the bacteria in the fungus do their, or the yeast in the, in the fungus do their work. I guess there's bacteria in there as well. The net result is this kind of vinegary drink, vinegary liquid that you can drain off. You can keep making it. You just put more, keep it, keep it in the fridge. Keep the mother in the fridge. That's what the original hunk of fungus. It's, it's actually a tea fungus. You add the sugar to this tea fungus, and you end up with this acetic acid producing complex of bacteria and yeast. Here's the, the thing about kombucha. that <laughs> It's so, so interesting. Kombucha exerts much of its health benefits because it, it is a source of vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is the same idea. This is, this is what accounts for the multi- functional benefits of kombucha. Now, in kombucha, you're also going to get uh, uh, bacteria. That's true. You're going you're to get gut bacteria. But the real health benefits come from the fact that it is a source of acetic acid. Why is acetic acid important? Acetic acid, which is the active ingredient in vinegar, is an incredibly functional biomolecule, plain old vinegar. It's a short-chain fatty acid. That helps your brain work better, helps you handle blood sugar better, helps your liver work better. This is why apple cider vinegar, that's why I talk about apple cider vinegar all the time. You go on the web, you'll see it's almost like it's a, an old wives' tale. Because people think, how could plain old vinegar be so multifunctional? Well, it, it's multifunctional because the active ingredient, acetic acid, is a very, very functional biomolecule. Especially for blood sugar, by the way. Diabetics should all be using a little bit of apple cider vinegar, in my opinion, or now kombucha. Kombucha, uh, if you like the taste. I don't particularly, particularly like the taste of kombucha, but it is, a, like I say, a source of good bacteria. can help you with your digestive system, and also the acetic acid is tremendously multifunctional. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Joe in Pennsylvania and say good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Joe, what's up? Yes, uh, hello, Ben, again. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I'd like to know if you could uh, elaborate or expound on uh, two supplements I have for you today. Okay. The first one would be the frankincense. Now, I've done some research on the frankincense, both with the extraction done with the hot vapor and the carbon dioxide, the CO2, and I spoke with somebody who's very credible that sells it on the Internet, and uh, they alluded to the fact that the, through the extraction, you lose the boswellic acid, and I've seen signs of that on alluding to that on the internet too. That you lose the boswellic acid in the resin through the extraction. Now, hmm. is there a possibility that uh, that since you lose that boswellic acid, how can we get that boswellic acid? Well, you could take boswellic. Is. Boswellic acid is a very common supplement. A lot of longevity products have boswellic acid. Are you positive of that, though? I don't know. Yes. I, yeah? seen, okay. I, I was told that by that, that person that sells it, and uh, I see evidence of that so you, online that that's lost through that experience. Okay. All right. Well, that's, you know, I didn't know that. Uh, steam distillation yeah. typically will keep things like boswellic acid, although I, I shouldn't say that because maybe boswellic acid doesn't come out into the distillation process. Um, you know, I, that's something I don't know. You can take boswellic acid. Which for the listeners, by the way, boswellic acid is a great anti-inflammatory. It's found in frankincense, and frankincense, as you probably, sounds like you probably know, Joe, is like a very famous biblical oil. It's been around forever, and, and uh, it's, it's very popular. It's, it grows in the Middle East. It grows somewhere in, like, Ethiopia, in that part of the world, anyway. So I'm not sure exactly where it grows, but, uh, it, but it grows in that part of the world, and it's in the Bible, and it's in the Bible as a kind of spiritual substance, I think. Do you know anything about that? Yep. It's it's in the yep. Bible. Yeah, like they would anoint the priest with frankincense kind of thing. Is that right? I'm, I'm yes, not remembering. Absolutely. It's, it's okay. indigenous to the African uh, Yeah, that whole part of the world, there. right. And the both, it sounds like you know quite a bit about this. You may know more than I do. Because I, I, here's the thing about the herbs. I love herbs. I'm an, I, I had an herbal pharmacy for many years. I would just tincture herbs, and we would wildcraft them. I'm, a very, I'm, I'm very respectful of herbs, but they're not fundamental to health the way nutrition is. So I don't talk a lot about herbs. If you have, if you have pain, post-surgical pain, or uh, inf, uh, inflammatory pain, Boswellia does have a very – 
a well-researched and justified reputation for being a powerful anti-inflammatory. You can take, you can get boswellic acid by itself as a supplement to answer your question. Yes. Uh, yes. Frankincense, well, it's, one. frankincense itself, you know, I don't know much about essential oils as medicine, although I read about it a lot. I haven't experienced very much medicinal properties that, that I, I, I could say are definitely not placebo effect from frankincense or any other essential oil. As much as I love the smell and I love aromatherapy, you know, I love the smell of frankincense. Uh, what's your yeah. second question, Joe? Yes, the second one would be, it's in the forefront uh, today on uh, the internet. Uh, it's in the full fruition, uh, carbon 60. Uh, it's about time. I elaborate about that. Yeah, yeah it's really... in my, I put in my truth skin. I, I, you know, I have in my truth treatment products, although I'm thinking of taking them out um, because they're just really hard to get, to tell you the truth. A C60 is a very fascinating molecule. It, it may be the most fascinating molecule of all. It's, it, it, if you look at the chemical structure, and remember, chemistry is all about tinker toys. I've said that so many times. I, you know, I, I hate to keep repeating myself, but it's important to recognize that chemistry is sh about shapes. And so the shape of a chemical determines its function. It's called structure function, technically. And the shape of a chemical molecule will determine its function. So the shape is very important. And the shape of what you're calling C60 or carbon 60 is made up of 60 carbons. That's crazy. That's 60 carbons. And not only are they made up of 60 carbons, they're made up of 60 carbons that are held together in this incredible shape that's just like a ball. In fact, the, generic, the, the slang name for C60, do you know what it is for C60, the slang name, Joe? Buckyball. Yeah, sir, it's Buckyballs. You know why? Uh, I, I could surmise. Go ahead. Okay, well, one of the greatest brains geniuses of all time, a guy named Buckminster Fuller, uh, who is a philosopher and a, theology, the, a theologian and a, uh, and a mathematician and a chemist. I mean, he was just everything. He was a polymath. He was a genius. Brilliant guy. He came up with this chemical structure. He actually synthesized and, and invented this chemical structure that is uh, made up of 60 carbons and is in the shape of a ball, a s perfectly symmetrical spherical ball that's hollow in the center. That's amazing for molecule. They named Buckyballs after Buckminster Fuller. It's a Buckyball, obviously, you know, you know, Buckminster Fuller, Buckyball. It's C60, but it's also called fullerenes. Have you heard that term, fullerenes? Yes. They're also called yes. fullerenes. And I, I became fascinated with them because I just loved chemistry when I, was in, uh, when I was in college, when I was in pharmacy school. And I was always wanted to work with them. They're hard to find. They're really hard to work with. They're incredibly stable, which doesn't lend themselves to, use very much, uh, to using them in a skincare product or even in a, a nutritional product. But we'll finish up when we come back from our break. Don't go away, Joe. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back. Hi. Okay, we are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Joe in Pennsylvania about carbon 60. Joe, you there? Yes, how, I am. How did, you, how did you hear about C60? Curiosity. Well, yeah, some of the research that I've done in the past, uh, people have uh, spoken about it. and uh, how do, what, do you, what do you hear about it? Well, they they claim that uh, that they're making it uh, in the last ten years. They're making it more more bioavailability to, yeah. to the body. They're making it with a, an, an isotope level that they're nanophilizing to the body. Right? Well, wait a minute. How do you have an isotope of C sixty? I thought it's like perfectly spherical. Are there isotopes? Well, they they do dope it. Uh, oh, they add the state, where okay. then the mol okay. molar mass, the molecular mass changes plus or minus. Of around that 60 to make it more bioavailable to the body. Okay, I didn't yeah. realize you could do that. Because uh, that, that's the problem with C60, and this is why uh, you don't yeah. see it very much. It's so darn stable. It's like unbelievably stable. Uh, you've seen the pictures, I imagine, right? Yes, and that's why I wanted you to expound or elaborate on Is it bioavailable yeah. to our body? Can our body well, use they, it ionically and covalently? No, they've been trying to, but it doesn't seem like they would. Well, here's where it excels, though. It's a delivery system. And also, it has antioxidant properties. So, to me, I use it as a delivery system. That's why I look, That's why I'm fascinated with it because it has the shape of a ball of a ball, and it's hollow in the inside. So it lends itself to storing things and then delivering them. So I, I imagine it's got some biological activity. Otherwise, it wouldn't you know wouldn't be an antioxidant. But it, I know as a chemist, it's hard to put into products. It doesn't go into anything. You can't dissolve and it's it. It's really. soluble. 
it, it's not really soluble in anything. You've got to you got to create a suspension with it. Well, I don't want to get too much inside baseball here, Joe, because right. you know you sound like you know a lot about chemistry. But just so, it's just so stable, it doesn't do much. However, as a delivery system, it really excels. I do hear it's an antioxidant, so I imagine it must have some kind of biological potential. But I, I don't know. I, I've seen some of the now they have droppers of it, and I actually did buy some just to check it out. Uh, it's in oil. Supposedly, they make it small enough. They, they nanofilize it somehow, make a tiny, tiny molecule out of it. I'm not sure exactly how they do it, to tell you the truth, but I've known about it for years, and I find it to be one of the most, maybe the most fascinating chemical shape I've ever seen in my life. There's a, there's a few of them that I like, but that one is amazing. Good for the listeners, and I don't want to, I'm going to let you go here. I got a bunch of calls here, Joe, but for the listeners, yeah. look up Google Images, Fullerene, or C60 if you want to see why people become chemists or why people love chemistry. I hope I helped you, Joe. I didn't mean to uh, not answer your questions, but you know, I don't really know enough about it from a from a, a nutritional standpoint. But from a chemical standpoint, I can't. Aside from being an antioxidant, I'm not sure what it would do. Yeah, good okay? question, Ben. Thank you much. Okay, take care, buddy. Bye bye. All right, let's talk to uh, Brent in Missouri. Good morning, Brent. Welcome to the bright side. Hello. Thank you. Uh, I'm big big fan of yours. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So my uh, before I get to my question, um, I know you talk a lot about the uh, or have people calling in about the natural versus synthetic vitamins and all that stuff. Can you talk just a little uh, bit away from your phone because it's hard to hear you. You're, you're breaking up just a little bit. I don't know if you're too close to the mic or what. Try a little. Is hold. that any be- Is that better? A little bit. Go ahead. Ask your question because I might have to drop you. You're you're choppy. Okay. Well, my my question is. Um, I'm trying to follow the ketogenic diet. I've done it in the past. I used to be a a competitive bodybuilder, so I know all about how to do it. Um, And I know you recommend taking uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine throughout the day, but it seems to me if you're going to be doing the intermittent fasting, that's going to break your fast when you're consuming it because it has carbs in it. Well, very little. It's mostly micronutrients, very, very little carbs, not significant enough to break your fast. Um, okay. it, it is a judgment call, though. You know, if you want to be, you, it does have a tiny little bit of carbs, but I, I don't know that that would be significant enough to, to make much of a difference in the ketogenic diet. It is micronutrients, and those do not affect the ketogenic diet. In fact, they make it easier for the ketogenic, they make it, they facilitate the ketogenic diet. The micronutrients help you process fats. The ketogenic diet requires healthy fat processing. So you got to work on how you process fats, and micronutrients can help you do that, particularly the B vitamins. The B vitamins help, help your, uh, the cells get energy. The ketogenic diet is a way of providing cells with more energy, but the B vitamins are part of that energy-producing chemistry. And the, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is packed with B vitamins. So I don't know that that would make much of a difference, and in fact, I would think it would help. That's just my opinion. Okay, so if you're doing the fasting throughout the day, um, what about taking your, uh, your supplements or omega? You know, that's a great question. I get that question a lot. And here's the deal. The ketogenic diet is a way of giving your body, of depriving your body of an easy source of nutrition. Okay. So what it has to do then, it has to go for a little harder source of nutrition, which is the, the fats or source of energy, I should say. Most of us get so much energy, we live in such an energy-dense environment in terms of our food, that the body never has to work to generate energy. When the body is in an energy-deficient state, i.e. when you're fasting or when you're going ketogenic, you don't have an easy, quick source of energy, that is sugar, it is forced to use fat. But as it turns out, fat is a much better source of energy than sugar. So what you want to do is you want to keep the body from having an easy source of energy, which is sugar. The micronutrients, the essential fatty acids and the things you're talking about, aren't going to make a difference there. They're only going to help. Now, if you want to lay off everything, it's not the end of the world to miss two or three days of your nutritional supplements if you've been taking them for a while. But it's not going to affect the genesis of ketones. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, so that you want to, and also for fasting, I hear that all the time. Should I take my supplements when I fast? It's not going to affect your fast if you take micronutrients because what you're depriving, what you want to deprive yourself is the calories. There's no calories in micronutrients. That's one of their distinctions from macronutrients is they're calorie free. So you won't have, you won't get that burden on the body. You won't, your body won't be forced to process things. It won't have that ca- caloric energy inside of it that it has to deal with. So you're basically giving your body a vacation, especially your digestive system, a vacation. That's why you fast. In terms of ketogenic, the ketogenic diet, you don't want to give your body a vacation, but you want to make your body, force your body to burn fat. That's basically what the ketogenic diet is doing. 
Okay. So even if you're fasting in the morning, it's okay to still take your uh, yeah, fish it's oil not gonna, capsules? Exactly. It's not going to change anything. Now, fish, fish oil, you might want to take with a little bit of food. Uh, depending, you have to see how you do with it because you want to have some bile going and some digestive juices going for the fats. But maybe you might not, there's such a tiny little bit, it might not make a difference. There's such, such a tiny little bit of fat of oil inside those capsules and it might not make much of a difference, but you'll have to see how you do. If you feel uncomfortable, you, you're taking too much, back down. If you feel burpy, you know, those are all signs of malabsorption, not non-absorption. Okay? All right. Sounds good. Th- thank you. Thank you, Brent. All right, let's go to John, the underwear guy. Say good morning, John. How you doing, buddy? Hey, great. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing good. What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to call. I'm I'm probably bouncing off a little bit of what that last caller was calling about, but I kind of went into a new thing, did my New Year's resolution, finally figured out what it was I was going to do, uh, and basically was just to really go up another level in nutrition okay. or to watch myself. So I started off with a 36-hour fast, water All right. All right. And then I started on intermittent fasting and to keep down my calories and to start monitoring, writing everything down, doing a... Uh, a food diary, so to speak. Okay. And even even to include my fasting blood sugar in the morning, my blood pressure, and just start monitoring everything, exactly what I'm getting in fat, protein, carbs. A- any and surprises? Calories. Were you surprised at all? At what? Your results or what you found out? Did you get any, well, any right surprise? now I'm about, I'm about a week uh, past my fast. That's where I kind of, that was my reset. And then I started this about a week ago, and I'm looking actually at all my numbers right now. I'm keeping my calories down to about anywhere between 12 and 1,300 calories a day. Well, I'm, I'm wondering, John, because you're so in tune with your body, uh, did you get surprised when you did you did you learn anything that you didn't know when you when you started noti- uh, taking notes? No, actually, because I've been listening to you and I've been doing a lot of research over the last two years, um, I'm really just trying to now take everything that I know or everything that I've learned so far and then put it down on paper so that I can look at things. And, yeah, you know, it's really nice to be able to look at your your, uh, your diary as you're eating and say, gee, I need a little bit more fat today. I want to keep my fat at about 70% or I need a, true a little scientist. bit more of this. You're a true scientist, John, the underwear guy. Well, and and if I have problems with something like my skin or just anything happens, uh, I'm always going to look for food first. And obviously, I'm tracking everything that I eat and and everything that I'm doing now. At least I am. And Good so now job, John. I can I can I can look at things. But that, here's the que- here's the question I had. Yeah. We should we should talk on a whole show. Uh, we, we got, I, really, I got about I, I got about thirty seconds here. You got to wind down here. Thirty so. seconds. Yeah. Um, somebody called me. A friend of mine called me. She was going to go in for um, uh, for polyps to have her uterus removed, and she okay. had some cancer in there. And she, you know, just out of uh, out of spite, I guess, I said, "Listen, why don't you just fast?" Okay, fast for John. About you got to wind days. it down, buddy. We got only got about twenty seconds. That's it. Uh, well, fasting. Uh, yes, choke yes, off or kill yes. Off cancer. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll kill off cancer, but cancer, de- it's definitely a way to feel better if you if you do have cancer because you won't be feeding the cancer. You do have to eat. Uh, of course, you want to make sure you're nutrient. Thanks so much for your call, John. I appreciate it. Uh, that's, that's definitely a big subject. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. If 